Good morning. Uh, it's great to be here at the end of the week and looking forward to a good Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, Saturday soul winning and Sunday at church. And Sunday night, if you're at our church, um, this is the first Sunday in August. I know sometimes people watch these later, but uh, if you dated the first Sunday in August this weekend, uh, we're having uh, Alvin Martinez is going to be with us Sunday night. He's on vacation. And uh, to have him show up on a Sunday, he said, he, he said he wouldn't preach. He said, I'm just coming to your church. I'm on vacation. want to visit your church. And I said, okay, would you do our teacher's meeting? And he said, okay, I'll do that. So Sunday night, uh, 10 till 6, he's doing our teacher's meeting, talking about Sunday school growth, growing your Sunday school class. And then Sunday night after church, we have, um, we have our uh, ice cream social. And so if the sermon's not sweet enough, the ice cream will be. And um, you can bring, a, bring some ice cream, bring some toppings, or just bring a, we'll, be have, we'll have bowls and spoons, but you can bring your own custom bowl, I guess. But anyway, it'll be a good Sunday together. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, um, Sunday school teachers meeting. Um, it'll be a great time together. And just want to encourage you to uh, to be a part of things. Um, Saturday morning, pray. If you can't be at soul winning at 945, pray and ask God's blessing as we go out um, Thursday night, uh, Saturday morning. There's other times people go out, but primarily Thursday night and sa Saturday morning, people are out soul winning. And it's such a, such a needy world. And I'm going to be in John. I just look in John chapter 7 um, this morning, mention a few things. But before I got there, I wanted to just mention our um, our missionary book and the, the great people that are in here. Uh, looking at uh, Johnny and Denise Esposito, all their kids are grown. He's, uh, I guess he's my age or somewhere real close to it. But um, he's overseeing. Uh, working with or helping, I'm not exactly sure what his official title is, but he works with these uh, many, many missionaries out of Pacific Baptist Church in Southeast Asia, crossing various country lines, and and just a great family. And and uh, but you know he's he's um, mid 60s, and I don't know exactly where he is. I'm 60, 70, somewhere around my age. Within a few years, I'm guessing. Might be a few years younger. I don't think he would be much older if he was. But, um, you know, you hit your 60s, your body things start giving you grief, whether it be arthritis or or a gout or teeth, foot, knee, joint, whatever problems. And and, and they're, they're out there serving and working and right on the front lines. And so pray for them, pray for their health, pray for them you know, when they have a need to find the right doctor, and just that God would direct their path to be a help. And what a pleasure. And um, and then just looking at, uh, just picking out um, various people here. Um, I was with Eddie Galleon in our last trip to the Philippines, uh, um, Eddie and, and Barbara Galleon. And what a, what a great couple, what a great church. And our church raised up, raised some money, and we brought them a chunk of money for their put, to put a balcony into their their uh, their auditorium, or to help with it. I don't think we gave them enough to do it all, but but um, within a few weeks after we left, he sent me a picture. That balcony was going in, and uh, they have filled their property. They have got beautiful dormitories and a Christian school dormitories for their college students. They have a nice guest apartment. We had some of our girls stay in that. I think it was a, I don't know if it was a couple of bedrooms, two or three bedrooms, whatever, but they had a nice kitchen. Um, they, they just, it's first class. Um, and just, a, oh, I don't know, a few hours from Manila. I can't say how far. I'm terrible with time and direction. I just know but by the time you fly to the Philippines or Australia or anywhere, Southeast Asia, it's a long time in a vehicle to be flying. And then, then you get in a car and drive wherever you're going. But um, these, these families uh, just doing what they do, uh, getting the, they're starting churches and training people to other, other people to start churches. And, and the Galleons, um, he just had both his knees replaced. And uh, he said in America, he, he said in America they wouldn't have done it, but in the Philippines they did them both at the same time. And so he he goes down to Manila, I guess a couple times a week, and uh, or to some, I think it's Manila, but he goes somewhere and gets physical therapy. And um, it just uh, it's, they have all the problems we do, 
and uh, they have the, they have a great work of God going on. So I hope you'll take your your missionary book, Declare His Glory, our theme for the missions conference, our theme for this year, to, to declare His glory among all people. God just doesn't want you and me bringing glory to Him. He wants all people to bring glory to Him. And so I hope you'll think about our missionaries. And, and of course, it's very personal. Uh, I love these missionaries. Some of them I don't know personally, but many of them I do know personally. Uh, Randy and and uh, Kelly Johnson got a letter here from Randy and Kelly. Um, we started supporting them in the Azores. And they're our age, graduated under the ministry of Dr. Hiles. And then Brother Johnson got cancer. And so they had to come home, go through all the treatments, and, and he got through it, and he was okay in the process. They, then they went to Okinawa, served there, and then his wife got cancer, and they came home and went through all the treatments with her. And in the process of all that, they had a son die, and just some real, real burdens. And um, then they stepped up working with First Bible International, and they did a lot of teaching and training in India, primarily in India, some other place, but primarily there, teaching pastors and like running Bible colleges and seminaries and trying to help these pastors get sound in the faith. And um, and it's no easy thing to, to live and to go culture to culture like that, but to travel the way they travel and eat what they eat and sleep where they sleep. And, and uh, one of our friends uh, they went to work with some people in India for a, a while, and he brought his wife with him. Um, I guess he'd been several times, but this is not Brother Johnson. It's another guy. And he said, we got there, and the people were so excited because since I was bringing my wife, they built a restroom. And what they built was an outhouse. So before his wife came, they didn't even have an outhouse. And, you know, you just think, yeah, they go teach the Bible to people, or whatever. We have no idea all the ripples and all the little nuances. But Randy and Kelly Johnson, again, I'm guessing they're a little younger than, than us, maybe somewhere around our age, my wife and my age. But um, now he's um, he's felt the Lord leading him to uh, stay in one place now. And so he's going to be pastoring a church in, um, let's see, it's in Florida. And I'm looking for the name of the Zephyr Hills, Zephyr Hills, Florida. And this is a guy and his wife, just faithful through the years. They preached, he preached at our missions conference this last year, and what a great guy. And so they're, they're on their way transitioning there. But these people, they need prayer. And, uh, and they want God, they want to do the work of God, but they do the work of God through the power and blessing of God. And our prayers matter. And I, I hope to pray for me. And uh, pray for one another. The Bible talks so much about prayer. Paul the Apostle, as great a Christian as he was, he said, brethren, pray for us, that the word of God may have free course. And then at one point he said that the, Lord, that the Lord would deliver us from evil men. And so there's evil people out there. I have met some along the way. I met people who would, who would love to um, you know, cause the ministry grief, uh, hurt me personally, and um, I like me a lot. I have no idea what anybody else's problems are. But the world's, a, we're going to look at that here. Uh, look at, so if you, I know some of you are driving. Don't, don't look anything driving. But um, I'm going to read you a couple of verses in, in John chapter 7. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. So he'd been down in the area around Jerusalem. But if you go over to the Jordan River and then north to the Sea of Galilee, I'm off the top of my head, I'm going to say 30 miles, 40 miles. Um, and, but on foot, that's a long ways. And that would be where Capernaum is. Up in the hills above that would be where Nazareth is, where Jesus was born. And um, so he'd, he'd gotten in enough hot water down there around Jerusalem that he wasn't going to go there anymore. The people there in Jewry around Jerusalem, um, they, the Jews sought to kill him. So uh, first of all, just because you're a good Christian doesn't mean people aren't going to hate you. Um, you can dot every I and cross every T of courteous living. How do you think Jesus lived? I would say he lived better than any of us could live. And these people, want, some of them, wanted to kill him. So starting right off here, just because you're, there's, there's some misnomers. Uh, just because you're, living a, you're trying to live a good Christian life, don't be surprised if the world hates you. They hated him before they hated us. Um, so you go down a little bit further. 
his brethren said to him, um, depart hence and go to Judea that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Because the Feast of Tabernacles was about to go on. Most people would be traveling to Jerusalem and, and his brethren. Now we're assuming that is his literal brothers and sisters um, because he says that thy disciples, they dis differentiate between the brethren and the disciples. And uh, they said, why don't you go down there? No man that does great things wants to do it in secret. And um, um, verse 5 for neither did his brethren believe on him. So, uh, you ever had a family member not believe like you believe? You ever have a family member um, ask you why you do something, and when you try to tell them, they don't buy it, they don't agree with it, they don't, uh, they are not willing to go along with it. Um, it's just reality. How good a teacher was Jesus? How perfect was Jesus? Uh, I had somebody recently a little hostile toward me in uh, our teachings on on the home and modesty and uh, my uh, you know do you believe a woman ought to always um obey her husband or whatever i said the, the bible says that it's a it's the lady's choice to follow her husband to submit herself to him and so it's up to her it's not it's a slave relationship and and they they didn't like that and then what, what what about this thing about dress i said the bible talks about women dressing like women and men dressing like men. And then it talks about women dressing modest. I was so vague. I was so, I tried to make it so palatable. It didn't matter. They didn't want to hear it. Grrr. The, the world hates this book. And I feel bad because they don't see the light. They don't, they don't have understanding. They don't have, they don't have the, the savior. They don't have forgiveness of sins. They don't have the word of God guiding. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. But uh, don't don't be surprised that people uh, don't believe you. It's not your, you might say, I just need to intellectually be able to explain it better. No, it's not a head problem. It's a heart problem. I know it's okay to study cults. I taught a college course on cults. And and the one thing I kept doing is I had, I had recorded interviews with people from Islam and other religions, Buddhism and things that had gotten saved. None of them got saved because of intellectual arguments. They all got saved because somebody loved them. And um, it's, it's the heart. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. You can't get somebody saved intellectually. Um, because if their heart is set on their religion, Catholic, Mormon, Baptist, Buddhist, whatever, it doesn't matter. And you're showing them in their head that there are facts that contradict. They're not going to care because their heart is going to guide them. And it would be nice if we all lived in the Dr. Spock intellectual world, but we don't. And uh, let's just be honest. So um, in verse 7, they wanted to kill Jesus. In verse 5, his brethren didn't believe him. And um, then in verse 7, the world cannot hate you, but it hateth me because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Your personal holiness, your walk of decency and righteousness convicts the world of their unrighteousness. The fact that you don't go certain places, you don't do certain things, the fact that you don't behave in a certain way, those things make people so mad. They hate you because your light reveals their darkness. And your goodness reveals they're bad. And uh, we're not any better than anybody, but we ought to seek to live as good as we can live. And then you go down uh, to verse 12. Jesus did go down from Galilee to Jerusalem to the feast and did some teaching. And in verse 12, there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, he's a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceived the people. And so here we have the perfect son of God. I mean, nobody could teach the Bible any better. Nobody could communicate any more clearly. Nobody had a better vocabulary. Nobody had more intellectual understanding. Nobody knew the hearts of men any better. No one could do this any better than him. And some said, that's a good man. And some said, he's a deceiver. So, you know, in my my world, it's a, it's a spiritual world. I'm around the things of God most of the time. Uh, I've built, uh, worked on building houses and I've done mechanic work and things. I've done those jobs. And that is a, you got a job and you still need God's help, but you're going to build this house. You're going to work on this truck. You're going to change these tires. 
Um, I did photography work for a while. All right, we got that's very tangible. But for the last 40 some years, I've mainly been working, 45 years, mainly been working with people in the Bible. And, and I think, oh, if I could just explain it a little better. I think, no, nobody's going to explain it better than Jesus. And some said he's a good man. And some said, no, he's a liar. He is just a liar. And so I, I know we would all take it personal, but relax a little bit and realize you do the best you can and you commit, commit it all to God. And don't expect they tried to kill, they wanted to kill him. His family and his family, his brethren didn't believe him. And then because of his purity and his holy living, um, the world hated him, the people of the world. And then in verse 12, there was a, a div- they were, people were divided over him. And uh, lastly, down at verse 17, uh, it says, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. And, uh, and there's, there's more in here. But that verse 17, um, John 7, 17, basically says, if, if people will start doing what they know is right, according to the Bible, God will teach them more Bible. And if they'll do that, he'll teach them more Bible. And if they do that, he'll teach them more Bible. That's why you'll find some Christians just grow and grow and grow. It's because they seek the scripture, they search the scriptures, and, and, beca- and then they're surrendered. But when I put my hands up and say, oh, no, God, I'm not going there, what happens? God says, okay. And he still loves us, and we're still we're saved. We're still on our way to heaven. But the open door, the light of the word of God, it, it just dims. He just closes the door and says, well, if you don't want to go any further, that's fine. But I want him. I want him. I want him to teach me. And at 67, I, I guess I could sell my home and move somewhere and live on Social Security. I don't, I don't know how I would, but... I guess I could do that, but that's the last thing I want to do. I I want to do more. I want God's blessing. I want our buildings full, but I want another building, and I want to fill that building. And uh, and I want this. We've got a slab, and we've got the underground stuff, the electric and the water and the, the fire hydrant and the sewer hookups, and we've got the underground done and the slab, and now we're ready to put a building on top of it. And Maybe you, maybe someone watching this, you got the money to help us. We need it. We need money to get it done. And uh, there's so much to be done. I don't want to coast. I don't want to retire. Uh, I want God to bless me, and and I want my preaching to be a help, and and I want the opening of the Word of God to open, to turn lights on, so people see truth and help their family, their children, their their jobs, their businesses. Boy, we got a great God. But I I just want to encourage you. It's a mistake. Here's a couple of quick mistakes, and I'll close. It's a mistake when someone opposes you. It's a mistake to bend what you believe to be true to please that person because you can't please everybody. As soon as you bend here, someone else isn't going to agree, and you'll have to bend again, and then someone else is not going to agree, and you have to bend again. You're not. So it's a mistake to modify what you believe to try and please. If it's the... Uh, Proverbs 23, 23 says, buy the truth and sell it not. Now, that statement, buy the truth, that means it costs you something. Now, maybe not money, but it's going to cost you something. Relationships going to cost you some tension. It's going to cost you some lifestyle changes, whatever. Buy the truth and sell it not. That also means that there are some people who don't buy it. You know that colloquialism that we have today. Someone's talking about whatever, and someone says, oh, I don't buy it. Now, that doesn't mean they're purchasing something, but they are not buying into, and they are, I'm using the colloquialism again, they're, not, they're saying, I don't agree with it. I'm not willing to accept that as factual. I don't buy it. Well, Jesus said, you buy the truth. Proverbs well, Solomon wrote it. Buy the truth and sell it not. And so, number one, it's a mistake to try and mold your beliefs to try and please those people who don't like you. Secondly, it's a mistake to change for pastors to change what they preach in order to try and get people to come to their church. Pretty soon you won't believe a thing. Pretty soon you'll compromise on that. You'll compromise on music and you'll compromise on versions of the Bible and you'll compromise on, on modesty and you're going to compromise on soul winning. And you're going to compromise on personal separation. You're going to compromise on ecclesiastical search, that's church separation. And uh, pretty soon you won't believe a thing. And that's a mistake. Uh, third mistake, it's a mistake to think that when people accuse you or slander you or don't believe you, that it's your fault. Because we just read the perfect son of God. They hated him, wanted to kill him. They didn't believe in him. 
and they were divided over him. Now, I don't think we should be rude on purpose, and I don't think we should try to hurt people's feelings. I try. I try to to express love and care. I do cut up on, on my sarcasm. Sarcasm kind of runs probably too much sometimes. But, oh, there's, there's no lack of love in this heart for people, even those who don't love me. Um, and people are precious. And I think as the years have gone by, if there's anything that I, if we're talking about feeling, anything I feel more, anything mentally, intellectually that I have more, I want more, it's a love for people. And this is a hurting world. People are taken advantage of. People are lied to. It could be, their, it could be the, the, the uh, political world. It could be the business world. It could be, you know, an unfaithful spouse. It could be drugs and liquor. You name it. People are being beat up in this world. And probably most of you listening to me right now, you're thinking of something that you've been beat up over. And then there's just the common things. Your body gets old. Your spouse has gone to heaven. And and you're sitting there trying to wrestle through, what do I do with my days? And and as my health goes, I can't do as much. I used to be able to be busy and fill my time. And now I can't, I can't even do that. And you wonder, what's God doing? All I know is he's good. He's good. But I do know this, as the years have passed, uh, I, I believe I have more tenderness toward people. Um, this, world will, this world will chew people up and spit them out. And it bothers me. Uh, oh, people need to be saved. They need to find the peace that passes all understanding. They need to find the assurance and the hope that Jesus is coming again and everything is going to be all right. Thanks for joining us. Would you pray for the weekend, for Saturday soul winning, the activities for Sunday, all the activities Sunday morning, Sunday night, that God would richly bless. God would keep the bills paid. Uh, we sure need his help financially. And so you pray, would you? And hope we get to see you in church on Sunday.